Okay, we are live. Welcome, everybody. My name is Kenton Gray. I'm with Zephyr Holistic Investment Fund. Uh, this day's webinar is sponsored by GoToCrowd. As you know, GoToCrowd is a leading online investment platform. Our project today that we'll be introducing is with Desert Kings, our partners in this project. Uh, we are joined by both principal and CEO Phil Creek and the Chief Cultivation Officer George Artiles. Welcome, gentlemen. Kenton, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. Hi, Phil. Thank you for joining us today. Looking forward to a very fun event. Uh, this usually takes about 30 to 45 minutes for everybody online, just to make sure that you have set aside enough time. I uh, also want to go through a little bit of the housekeeping as we let people hop on, give people about a minute or two to join us and get situated before we get started. Um, <clears throat> One of the things we'd like to do initially as people are popping in, looks like we got quite an audience today, is a quick audio check. Just type yes or no or problems or warbly or whatever into the chat. Just give us an idea that you can hear us okay. Um, you should see the landing page screen of Jeff Zephyr Holistics on your, your screen. So everything is good there. We'll start to roll forward. Um, today's event is going to be introducing the Desert Kings investment uh, platform that we have going through GoToCrowd. And for everybody that's on the call today, we have some pretty exciting things that we're doing. And one of them is a $500 giveaway, which is at the end, we do a raffle for $10, $50 Amazon gift cards. And we encourage you guys to stick around, not just for the gift cards, but because the information that you're going to see is pretty incredible. This opportunity is, is second to none. And if anybody's been paying attention in the cannabis space, we all know that it's growing fast and getting in now is, is, a, is a really good opportunity as we will show you. So again, at the end, we will give you a code word to put in the chat that will go into a, a raffle and we'll pull out 10 of those names and each one of you will be notified as who wins. Um, so as we get started, this is a $3 million capital raise in conjunction with Desert Kings through Zephyr Holistic Fund. A uh, quick little disclaimer, I'm not going to read this stuff or bore you guys, but this is basically an offering for accredited investors only. If you aren't an accredited investor, obviously you're encouraged to stay and listen. And anybody that you know that is or you'd like to partner with, um, please pass along that information, send them to GoToCrowd and look up the Zephyr Holistics offering uh, through the GoToCrowd platform. And with that, just to give you a little bit of background on who we are, uh, Zephyr Holistic Fund um, is a part of a larger capital group. Uh, we specialize in, in pharmaceutical, biotech, and sterile manufacturing and mergers and acquisitions. Uh, we have several hundred million dollar projects in place right now, so we're not new to this space. And we're very excited to be working with uh, Desert Kings to bring their project um, up to the same standards that we've been working within this industry for, for many, many years. Um, just to kind of give you an understanding of who the players are here, again, so all the investors, investor relations and the capital management is handled by Zephyr Holistic Fund. Um, we have obviously a ton of different projects in progress, including construction, equipment, operations, um, they have what have you. M1 Holdings LLC was an acquisition by Desert Kings. Desert King is the sponsor, um, the operator and the uh, cultivator of this project. It is a wholesale grow operation that is going to um, meet the huge demand right now that's sitting out here. But quite, just a quick note on this guys, um, and, and Phil jump in if, if, if you think you should, but um, the professional expertise and the super high tech um, nature of your guys' platform is really poised to just completely fill a, a massive uh, gap within the marketplace, which is demand and consistency of demand, which we'll get into. So actually, I just answered my own question. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, the key considerations of this project, uh, guys, I, I'm really excited about talking about this. I normally am in the pharmaceutical space. We do a ton of business within healthcare, uh, healthcare manufacturing distribution. Um, but to see something go from the old style traditional methods to high tech is it's been it's really incredible. And here's here's why uh, this project right now is fully indoor uh, boutique size manufacturing uh, initial license is 11,000 square foot commercial cultivation facility. It's completely high tech and high tech computer controlled um, top quality clones from licensed trusted supplier, which basically gives us 
uh, a consistency of quality and um, production quantity that we can meet this this void of inconsistencies in the marketplace obviously giving us a very high yield premium flower cultivation um, with the highest levels of THC with laboratory testing and with any brand obviously you're going to want to have that consistency and quality um, that both the consumer and your partners that are purchasing from us are going to expect and we obviously have set ourselves apart to be the first GMP compliant uh, facility in California. Also, our, our distribution line and channels are fully in place. In fact, we have a couple letters of intent that we're working through the negotiation on right now for actual retailers to buy out our entire crop um, full year over possibly a three year term. So we could have all of our revenue contracted as this thing even gets off the ground, um, which gives us stable year to real year after year product demand, um, easy transport and handling, of course, and our annual product demand is growing at about 36% per year, which we'll get into some of the other opportunities that Desert King has in addition to this as we get to the end. Obviously, our, our fiscal year revenue projections is $6.2 million. We have an average gross margin of about 33%, and your money will be leaned against the existing licenses. Today's The purpose of today's webinar really is to just walk you through all the information related to the industry, uh, what we're doing specifically through the Zephyr Holistic Fund and with our partnership with Desert Kings and why you should be a part of this. If anybody's been paying attention to the, the cannabis industry, everybody has probably seen how fast it's growing. Um, it's no longer in the baby infancy stage. It's starting to mature. The regulations are becoming more standardized with a tremendous amount of opportunity in a variety of different directions. Um, this particular facility is going to be, I think, the first GMP compliant cannabis cultivation facility in California. GMP stands for good manufacturing practice. Um, if anybody's familiar with manufacturing practices in the pharmaceutical space, this is the basic standard uh, for the processes and the equipment. Um, gives us the standards that you'd expect without going into a long uh, dissertation what that actually is. I know that Phil will get into that, and I think even more so uh, George. Um, our short product development timeline allows for early investment repayment, and you can enjoy being a partner with us, one of the highest margin revenue niches within the manufacturing space, being as high as 39%. Uh, this particular investment is giving out a minimum annual return of investment or on investment of 15%. And as we get through this, you'll see that there's many, many more reasons, but these are some of the highlights of reasons to invest. And with that, I want to bring on Phil, who can talk to us a little bit more about Desert Kings and where we're at right now and what this opportunity is and where we're going with it. And with that, Phil. Before I take it off, Kenton, I just, um, I think, I think there was one uh, small point for you to, to elaborate on as well as about the note, the $3 million. Component. Ah, I apologize, guys. I got so excited about the technology. I forgot about the, uh, <laughs> that. So yes, let me digress. This investment uh, is a convertible note um, for accredited investors. Um, rules are $100,000 or more. It's a convertible note. And we'll be getting into that as we go into the, the back. It's not an equity play. Uh, you're not getting stock. This is a convertible note. That you will have a possibility to convert into equity if you like what you see and you enjoy being a part of this. Otherwise, it's just strictly a note. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for reminding me about that. That was an important point. Yeah, no point, no problem, man. Like, you know, when we're when we're going live, you know, you, sometimes it's it's hard to remember everything that we got going on. Anyways, it's definitely an exciting uh, project. Yeah, right. No. Okay. So my name is Phil Creek. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Desert Kings. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a background about myself, I got into the tech space about 12 years ago. And what that means is I was a, a distributor for electronics um, all over the world for the last 12 years. About five years ago, I got into the cannabis space in various different means, um, of which at that point I moved to Los Angeles and got into cultivation. That's basically when I saw the profitability of the cannabis space and decided to look into um, more spaces. So uh, once I bought this cultivation space in downtown Los Angeles, I started to look at other opportunities and found this, this opportunity here in Desert Hot Springs. And that's at what point I, I founded Desert Kings. Um, so what I did was I acquired a M1, which is a type 12 micro business of which we're gonna use 6,000 square feet for cultivation. This business has three licenses, which is cultivation, manufacturing, and distribution. 
From these, uh, from these means, cultivation will produce about 3,240 pounds of high quality cannabis flower each and every year after the first harvest as well as Ken had said, 39% profit margin with an average of about 33%. We can slide down to the next, to the next slide here. We talk about the, the timeline and the milestones a little bit. So uh, in the fourth quarter of 2020, we uh, acquired the, uh, the, the license, which is what point we also executed the lease. It's a long-term lease, so it's a five-year lease with two five-year options to extend. Um, that's at what point that I uh, put $500,000 of capital contribution into Desert Kings to secure the lease, to secure um, uh, architectural plans and MEP plans, as well as uh, begin uh, you know, deposits and various different uh, parts of this, this project that cost money, obviously, from the very beginning. Of that 500,000, I also guaranteed an additional 500,000 uh, for a total of $1 million, which, which uh, this project is actually $4 million to fund in which we're actually raising $3 million through Zephyr Holistics. So as you can see here in this, the timeline milestones, we have a six month construction plan, which will, which will be uh, started once we finish the capital raise by the uh, by, by the end of quarter two, beginning of quarter three. Um, and then four months after the construction is completed, we plan to have our first harvest, as well as money back from that harvest from products sold, at which we'll begin uh, delivering our, uh, our per percentage uh, return on investments. Uh, after that first harvest, we plan on no less than four and a half successful harvests per year. And we can go to the next slide. So project location, let's talk a little bit about the location here. So this location is Desert Hot Springs. What's nice about it is it's brand new construction. It's in Desert Hot Springs, California, which is amazing because the city itself uh, is very, very happy about, about cannabis actually. And they're doing everything they can to pass regulations to make, more, make sure more and more cannabis facilities can move into their uh, city for tax purposes. Um, the infrastructure, for instance, this, this area has two electricity grids to make sure that if any, if any, at any time, for instance, the power goes down in one grid, it'll be supported by the second, as well as this is California. So we're very eco-friendly, which means that we have all the eco-friendly waste um, to make sure that any sort of waste from the actual facility that, that is derived from the cannabis production goes directly into the proper um, uh, waste removal services. As well as this location has, has great tax implications. So it has some of the lowest taxes in all of, uh, not Los Angeles, but in the greater Los Angeles area. And like I said, I have another cultivation um, facility in Los Angeles. And it's actually the reason that I'm, that I'm venturing into this larger facility is because the electricity costs in this area, for instance, are half of what it is in my other facility. Uh, as well as you can see, it's really close to Palm Springs in Los Angeles. So we find that there's, gonna, there's not gonna be any issues with the workforce, for instance. And what's great of, lastly about this facility is that it's completely surrounded by a fence and it has a 24 hour armed uh, security on, on call. They're actually on, on the, um, on the grounds. We can move to the next slide, which is the project construction a little bit. So like we said, this building has already been completed. The construction was completed last year actually, uh, which is nice compared to some of the other uh, opportunities that you may or may not have seen in the, in the greater SoCal area is you might, you might not even have a building. You might not have electricity. You might be missing various other things that you can actually do to start a, to start a facility like this and make it turnkey. So what's amazing about this is this is this facility is ready for the build out. We've actually already started the permitting process. We already have the license and we're going to begin uh, construction here. The first phase of the construction, which is just the permitting very soon. Additionally, this is all going to be GMP construction uh, coming from GMP uh, European equipment, for instance, that has been doing GMP for years and years and years. As you can see, just from the build out of this facility, we're gonna be putting the ACs and the water tanks outside of the building. What's great about that is it's gonna help us save space. So the one thing that matters the most, which is 
maximizing our cultivation area, which is where we actually make the money. Let's move to the next slide. Talk a little bit about the project construction. So as you can see here, we have two floors in this brand new building. Uh, outside, we have the equipment yard, which is on the left-hand side here. And then we have two floors of this facility with office space here down in the bottom, the bottom side of this uh, screen. We'll move over to the 12th slide now. Talk a little bit about the preliminary architectural plan. So like I said, I, I had already put $500,000 capital contribution. One of the reasons being is we need to start doing some of these things like architectural plans, starting the MEP plans, paying for the rent, et cetera. So here's some of the preliminary architectural plans that we have drafted out by our GMP consultants, um, Palomar Coast Development, as well as uh, Shadman Engineers. So these are the preliminary drawings, which shows, if you, for instance, if you look a little bit closer at this drawing here, the very bottom left-hand corner, we have the entrance to the facility, which is where, for instance, we have our, our GMP air showers for people and also for equipment. Uh, just to give you a little information about GMP, which George is gonna to touch on here a little bit more in a second, GMP, 30% of it is just the materials and the actual construction. So we're gonna go 100% GMP compliant for all the materials and all of the construction, whereas the other 70% is really procedural and protocols, which that's something that we're going to be implementing after we have the full build out of this facility. So as you can see, we've designed all of these things to meet all of those procedural uh, necessities that we need for some, uh, you know, uh, a warehouse like this, a uh, cultivation facility like this to be GMP compliant. Lastly, the reason that we picked Palomar Coast uh, as a potential general contractor is because they're one of the major general contractors for GMP facilities in this area. They actually have a huge uh, facility that's right down the street, actually, um, right now that's already fully G GMP compliant, and we picked them because of that, that reason exactly. So uh, let's see. I think we can move on to George. George, are you there? I'm here. Oh, awesome, man. So, so George is going to give you a little background on himself and then talk about uh, some of the basic cultivation operations that we're going to be uh, having in this facility. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is George Artillis. I'm the chief, chief cultivation officer with Desert Kings. And forgive my voice. It comes and goes in and out. Just give me one second. <clears throat> He's been he's been running around all day, uh, pushing our pushing all of our employees around for the other facility and <laughs> losing, losing his voice there. But thanks for coming on, George. Uh, sorry about your voice, you know, uh, no, bad timing, but I'm sure you're going to do a great job. Thanks thanks for being on here, George. No, 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 don't worry about it. Um, it's a pleasure uh, to give you guys a little background, uh, biochemistry background. I've been involved in the cannabis space for about a little over five years. Within those five years, starting with HPS lights and systems, I've been fortunate enough to kind of jump into LED lights. Um, <clears throat> forgive me, I sound like I'm going through puberty, but the gray hairs will tell you different. <laughs> uh, with that said, uh, to give you guys- That's brilliant. <clears throat> to give you guys a little background, um, just I'm making an assumption no one knows anything. Uh, the plants typically, or cannabis, typically has two cycles. Um, one would be a vegetative growth. And then you can see in the layout that Phil had shown, you have vegetation rooms, workflow of laying this out to get into the bloom rooms or growing rooms, which would then flower. Uh, manipulation of these plants in certain conditions to stress them correctly to maximize yields. Um, how do, why is that important? That's important because having a facility and typically like, if I back up here, um, traditionally growing cannabis has been somewhat of a non-permitted or non-legal um, activity. So a lot of the knowledge that's out there um, is done kind of in the back doors or outdoor and you know, in the very rural areas. Um, now that things have come and turned around and it is a legal industry, people have been reluctant to kind of use technology 
research. Everybody's kind of held on to their old ways. Um, and that's really important because slowly but surely competition will force you either to adapt the new ways or to just be pushed out of the industry. And I think that's why Desert Kings is so important in coming in to design a facility that is GMP compliant. GMP practices eliminate a massive amount of the hurdles that we run into. And in saying that, um, just to give you a little, just not to get deep into this, but typically you will take clones to jump two weeks of process instead of seeds and taking clones. Typically what happens when you bring the clones onto a facility, you wanna get them from a reliable source, but that doesn't guarantee that you don't have a pest issue that will pop up within the next three to four weeks, if not later, or if not sooner. That's not too much of a problem because it can be handled and mitigated within the vegetative stage. But once you flip a flower or you flip the plant into a flowering stage, what happens is that you are on a timer. You cannot revert back. And if you do, you will just really damage the plants. So being placed on this timer, you have certain, how would I say this correctly? You have certain protocols that must be done. You have certain tasks that have to be completed within a timely manner, because what we're doing is manipulating the environment to influence the hormones of the plant to be able to maximize the yield. Um, this facility is gonna be kept somewhat small, um, 6,000 square feet total canopy, each room being no more than 2,000 square feet of canopy um, is, is a fairly small, but it's done that way so that we can maximize our control. So not only are we designing from the start a good GMP building, and forgive me, I'm getting stuck here. <clears throat> oh, but we are trying to make sure that we do everything we can so that our processes are completely seamless. Not only are we doing GMP compliant buildings and design and layouts, but our quality comes from being able to cycle these things through year after year. Right now we're showing you conservative numbers at the bottom of this slide, but just to give you guys an example, 4.5 harvests a year. There's 52 weeks in a year, and typically there's nine weeks within the cycle. So typically we would be able to squeeze more in, but we give ourselves a little bit and like everything, we're just trying to be conservative, under promise, and then ultimately over deliver. But this process will go through from going into flower into then a trim. You will then harvest and trim the product while it cures. Once it cures, we bag it, we give it to our retailers. In this, you have a number of, how would I say, variables on how to turn around and clean the room. So I think GMP compliance makes this a lot simpler in comparison to traditional ways. Um, I saw you change the slide on me. You wanna go back one? There we go. All right, so basically in this facility, we have three rooms. We're just gonna give you some totals per cycle. Every room cycling out, you're gonna get about 720 pounds. That's on the low end, uh, 4.5 R business per year. We're really at closer to five after our first year. Um, totals a little over 3,000 pounds a year. Um, the 3,000 rooms at 6,000 space, total canopy space. And that's, you have three rooms at double tiers of, two, of 1,000, which will equal 2,000. Go ahead, switch to the next page. Thank you, Kenton. Um, the considerations, obviously, it talks about the GMP standards, environmental, this and that, and why these are important. It's because during these cycles, like I was mentioning, control, you are manipulating the hormones of these plants and controlling the environment is how you do this. Uh, we are a licensed facility. So not only are we very stringent on the procedures and how we grow 
but you have to understand that timing is everything. So being able to have the proper controls and the best controls to kind of put our put our plants in through the perfect process. Although many places aren't automated, we are automated. We use computers, but the redundancies is making sure that we have the equipment that will respond to the computer, which is doing this. Um, and what that does is allows us to really focus in on other avenues of the plant, which would be like pest management and making sure that we are pushing the plant to the most trike or uh, Jesus. Phil, help me out here. Uh, THC production, forgive me. <laughs> Oh man, I, I can only I can only imagine what it's like right now with that voice, brother. <laughs> I feel for you. <laughs> so, within all this, um, having redundancies is tough enough. Having a building that's GMB compliant designs these redundancies right into the pro into the program, and that Absolutely. makes this such a great opportunity. Um, go ahead and jump onto the next slide, Kenton. And just just to touch on that just a little bit, I think I think one of the points that George is, is making here as well is you know as well myself and George together have both worked in, in non GMP compliant facilities before, and one of the biggest problems is trying to upgrade a facility, for instance, to be GMP compliant or even to try and get to the point where the processes are easy enough where you can actually get the plants to be in the exact environment that you want them to be. So the, the, the thing that's going on right now in California is the majority of the facilities in California are not GMP compliant. And in the future, that's probably going to be the norm. That's going to be what's, what's guaranteed to stay ahead of the curve, for instance. And what all these facilities are going to have to do is they're going to have to spend millions of dollars just to catch up, just to be at the baseline that we're starting at today. Well said, Phil. Yes, it's a nightmare. Uh, having a facility that is not properly balanced is is horrible because you, you're always reactive to a problem. You're not proactive. And having Absolutely. a facility that has the right controls, you're allowed to be proactive and ahead of the game. Um, what that ends up doing just equals good production, good quality, if not great quality, gives you better pricing is not as long as well as good volume, which is weight. So to give you an idea, which now this slide shows on the left side of it, kind of gives you the three different ways um, or facilities that are used to grow cannabis outdoor, which would be basic farming under the sun. Greenhouse would be like a combination of an enclosure with or without retractable roofs um, that also utilizes the majority of the sun. Uh, some facilities have become a little bit more advanced and use lighting to additionally help the plant through, which are called light deprivation facilities. And then last but not least, indoor. Uh, and you can see the significant difference between outdoor greenhouse and then the significant jump into indoor. Um, those, the, the reason for the pricing is basically the cost to produce indoor and the quality that is produced with an indoor facility, with added indoor facility. Most people have been around or kind of heard about what it is. Um, and I kind of always have a saying that it's, it's not difficult to grow cannabis. It grows, that's what they call or slang, it's weed. Um, it grows like weed, it just grows. Be able to grow it properly, grow it well, and to maximize its effective efficiencies in growing this and effectiveness really are few and far between. Um, the numbers we're giving you right here forecasted on the right hand side, you can see at the bottom of, or the bottom of the page, we're basing the numbers on $1,900 a pound. Um, this is really the bottom of the market um, and no way want this to correlate with our quality, our quality, um, our last harvest, we had pounds going for three, I'm sorry, 3,000 to $3,500. And that's in bulk retail sales, bulk wholesale sales, not even retail. 
Um, but the reason we can do this is because we have the consistency and we have the quality that keeps us at the top of the market. And it's done because the facilities that we currently have, we've spent massive amounts of money retrofitting them to be somewhat close to GP, GMP compliant facilities. Being the first GMP compliant would actually start fresh slate and be able to dine these completely. So we find that as a huge competitive advantage, especially now in the future, which I'm sure Kenton will get into, that you get to see market. People get more and more introduced in the market where we'll slowly over the next couple of years start seeing not so much a saturation, but an introduction of more players within the market. And so survival of the fitness not becomes a factor you have to consider. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, George. I appreciate all that. You brought up some really good points here, and it really kind of hits to the heart of why Zephyr uh, Holistics Investment Fund is, is actually partnered with you guys. Uh, in, in just from the investor point of view and those for you that are on this webinar, I really want you guys to, to understand the amount of time and effort it takes for a company like ours to go through the due diligence process to vet a project like this before we even take a, a moment to invest the time and effort and personnel resources and even the, the capital that it takes to, to have this webinar and put these deals together, even bring it to the marketplace through the investment platform and go to crowd. There's a tremendous amount of work that's been done to this point. And to your point, really what separates out the growers um, really is the, the indoor versus outdoor, uh, having a GMP compliant type situation where you can, like I said earlier, uh, have the ability to control not only your, your quality, but control the quantity on a given basis so that in a business setting, unlike a traditional where, you know, you, you get what you get, you sell what you, you have, and it's kind of what it is. You're not working with uh, partners. You're not working with any fiscal targets. You're not working on revenue returns. And you're really having to be a little more accountable in this type of situ situation. So bringing it from an outdoor type of facility, not just indoor, but into the top level, highest level of compliance, even in the pharmaceutical space, is a tremendous uh, advantage on many, many levels. Wouldn't you agree? Completely agree. Um, yeah. And then as much as uh, people talk and say, oh, you know, this can be done or it's being done. It is being done, um, but it's not being done well. Unfortunately, uh, there is a need in the market. There's a, there's a gap in the market for consistent high quality cannabis, both for recreational and medical use. Um, and that this is an opportunity. The problem is that the industry in whole has outdated facilities. A lot of facilities that were either black market or poorly constructed. Um, and just because of like everything, limits and capital to be able to turn over and get operational fast. They've cut corners and now as cultivation directors, officers like myself, look into these facilities. We see the biggest problem as equipment that just fails. So it does you no good to have all this knowledge in our head and knowing exactly what points and what targets to hit in environmental points if the room does not react. And in turn, you know, you lose rooms, you'll, you'll have problems and, you know, consulting when I first started doing this six years ago, the first year that I spent was looking at all these problems coming into it. And you would say, wow, you know, you guys have a wonderful civility, but you have mismanaged where you put your money at. Instead of building a balanced room, you've just tried to throw in as many lights as possible because lights equal yield. And that's not always true. So having the right lights, understanding how it goes, like understanding all the elements that kind of dives into this. And I don't want to go too deep into this, but I think it's worth saying, understanding and having the knowledge of what needs to be in a room, how to balance is more important than just trying to maximize a room of light or maximize, you know, one sector of this because okay. that's what's going to get you money, which is not true. Quality and quantity will equal larger dollar amounts for you. Absolutely. I think, I think just to kind of, to, to go on that, to piggyback on that point there, George, like for instance, like just to, to simplify the overall uh, idea, you have a car, 
you put more gas in a car, it doesn't mean that the car is going to run any faster. You know what I'm saying? You need to upgrade the engine. You need to upgrade a lot of different pieces to the puzzle to make sure that the car can actually handle that extra bit of gas. And that's basically what George is doing. And that's one of the reasons that we're going with LED lighting. We're, we're focusing on, on some of the best agricultural uh, feeding product pro, uh, products. Processes, yeah processes and products on the market, as well as having everything computer automated. I mean, nothing can be better than dialing everything in and having everything measured like a giant science, um, you know, laboratory. And that's yeah. essentially what we're doing right and, now. And Phil, the redundancies of having the computers helping us, um, you, you eliminate, you minimize any type of human error. Absolutely. Um, and that's what we're, we're, we basically try to go through cycles, minimizing error, if not have no errors through a cycle consistently. So not only do we have our staff that has years of experience, but we have the availability that there is technology now that we can utilize just to make this work and alert us that much faster. Because not to say you will never have a problem. You, always, you have to always believe that there will be problems, but the time in which you have to react to these problems is crucial. And having a facility like this is key because you minimize that and you minimize the damages. Absolutely. And uh, I want to commend both of you guys for, for what you're doing. And I think uh, your, your experience and what you're going over speaks volumes to why we've chosen you guys as a, to partner on this. You know, the expertise is, is deep and the, uh, the professionalism and the approach that you guys take into this process is obviously top notch. And again, kind of back to the problem. What is the problem? The problem is there's a growing industry with massive demand that's constantly increasing. And you touched on it both, Phil and, and George. There's an, an inconsistency in quality and an inconsistency in, in quantity. And you have traditional growers that are coming out of the illicit market, coming into you know more mainstream licensed environment. But these guys are not trained. They don't have chemistry backgrounds. They don't have biology, biology or agricultural backgrounds um, like you guys do. And they're not willing to really, they don't know where to start. And this is, again, why Zephyr Holistics is actually partnering with you guys and just want the you know, partner, potential partners that are on this um, webinar with us right now to really understand why this process is, is such a great opportunity for us. And this project is also is a great opportunity for us. And don't want to... Uh, hit on the same subject again, but all of the stuff that you guys have had, the, the levels of experience with us in pharmaceuticals, the level of experience we've had in the investment and finance space, the level of experience you guys have brought to the table with what you guys are doing makes a perfect match. And we have the opportunity right now, being the first in this space to be GM complete, GMP compliant, fully automated, all these types of things you're talking about gives the investors and the partners a lot of not only transparency of what's happening, um, but a confidence in the project for not only their returns, but the ongoing participation. And we'll get into that here shortly. And that kind of transitions us from, from what you guys are talking about into let's take a look at what the market actually is. Um, so anybody that's watched TV or movies over the years knows from Chi Chong all the way forward uh, that there is a big industry and uh, around the world that has been in, in cannabis. Uh, cannabis has taken many forms. There's many niches now and a lot of derivative products that are coming out of this, both on the uh, the cannabis side and the hemp side, um, but the markets are growing very, very fast. We're going to take a look at the California market solely, which three years ago, 2017 was about $3 billion. Uh, We've just increased that here in 2020 to almost $4 billion. We're looking at almost a, a seven, seven and a half billion dollar marketplace over the next three to four years. And that is massive. And for us as a wholesaler, having a consistent product that not only the retail market can um, count on, but our wholesale suppliers can actually uh, have confidence in that they know that when they need the supply, we're going to be there with that supply. And when they have their customers, they spend a lot of the money on their marketing and their branding, um, that there's a product there that they can rely upon to be what they're, what they're looking for. Um, <clears throat> so let me get through a couple of these really important points here with California. California was obviously the first place to legalize medical cannabis with the passage of the Compassionate Use Act of 1996. And anybody that's been in healthcare, you may have noticed or, or heard of the right to try bill. The right to try bill was passed in 2016 in Nevada, which basically made it okay for those who have chronic conditions to be able to use things outside of the medical space and the, me and the traditional methodologies. That was then passed as a federal law. And this relates a lot to the cannabis space, both from a medical 
uh, in a medical specific setting and with the different derivative products that come out of that medical methodologies and, and traditional uh, modalities is the word I was looking for, for treating chronic conditions. Um, the cannabis sales forecast again in 2024, looking at almost seven and a half billion with an annual compound growth rate of about 20%. Uh, personally, we see trends that are a bit higher than this. Uh, everything that we put in this and any of our programs that you guys will see, they're obviously very conservative numbers. We would rather to under promise and over deliver than try to hype up a bunch of numbers that we may not be able to meet. Um, so if you do your own research, you're going to find that a lot of this stuff is actually much bigger. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the California cannabis industry as a whole. Um, the current legal California cannabis spending represents just over about 40, 54% of the total market share. Nearly half of the state's cannabis sales still running illicit. Although we're seeing the legal cannabis cultivation expanding to at least 70% of the market space, similar to what you're seeing in Colorado, if you guys are paying attention to this, this industry at all. Additionally, the mainstream trend in California is shifting from illicit cultivators to the licensed growers, as I said, with a higher grade quality products, which has really been driven by market demand. Um, when you spend money on apps and delivery systems and payroll and trucks and, and facilities and overhead, you can't have the gaps in quality and the gaps in supply um, as you do from the traditional industry. You know, when you have stuff being grown out in the the uh, backyard or the garage or even up on the mountains or in some of the farmland space up in you know Mendocino area, you get what you get. And when it's there, it's there. And when it's not, it's not. And if we have a bad winter or a cold spell or bugs or whatever, you end up with product problems. And from an investment standpoint, that's a non-starter. Uh, we have no interest in Zephyr Holistic, uh, Holistics and the parent company to be involved in something that we can't, one, oversee, control, and make sure that we can deliver um, a quality product too. So it's really, really important. I think, um, Phil, you got a comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I think one, one point to just add along with that too is that uh, California has some of the most stringent uh, testing protocols as well. So, I mean, you know, anything that's grown, for instance, on the black market, I can almost guarantee, you know, 99% of those, you know, come with pesticides that come with various different chemicals that are already in it or, you know, anything else that comes along with when, when you're, you know, running a market that's unregulated. Like, for instance, you wouldn't want... Uh, over-the-counter drugs to be coming from somebody's, you know, garage, for instance. So well, I think that's that's one of the, the main points, for instance, with, with this entire project is the fact that we're bringing something that's going to be high quality, it's going to be tested, and it's going to be reliable and consistent. Absolutely. And again, to the, to the point I've made several times here, that's one of the keys to being able to return consistent return on investment for our partners and really make sure that this is done in a, in a proper corporate setting with the processes and control points, you know, all the way through the entire business, which is fantastic. Bring us to the numbers, since we've been talking about those numbers. Um, Phil, you can help me with this if you'd like, but the average sale price uh, right now per pound is 1,900 on the wholesale level. Um, these are, again, again, very conservative numbers. We have seen prices going up to 2,500 and beyond. Um, Phil? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, you know, just to, just to piggyback on that, I mean, uh, you know, we put 1,900, hundred dollars per pound in our performance just because you know it's better to stay uh tried and true that's that's what the industry standard is we obviously expect to meet and exceed the industry standard by quite a bit for instance uh george had talked about before that he had, he's been he's been achieving over three thousand dollars a pound when the market industry standard is closer to 2,500. So when, you know, the market industry standard, for instance, is 1,900, which you can Google these numbers. These are totally available almost anywhere online. We, we plan to meet and, you know, exceed these numbers uh, easily. Absolutely. And this, at the end of the day, after our due diligence was really just, you know, how realistic are these numbers? And after visiting your facility and, and looking at all the pieces and the processes, um, we have definitely given this guy uh, a stamp of approval, if you will, and it's really kind of simple for us. You have a, a certain amount of square footage. That square footage produces a certain amount. It's a wholesale level. We have letters of intent right now on the table with companies that are at the retail level that want what we have as a supply, want that consistency. The consistency of revenue is super, super important, um, and this provides that. Uh, Phil, do you have any comments on, on this for in terms of just consistency of sales? Because in my book and from our perspective, what you're looking at here is a total return on investment from a wholesale level, from contracts that are pre-existing 
for the entire scope. And I think if I'm not mistaken, some of these LOIs go out to almost three years. So the entire harvest month in, month out for the next three years could almost be pre-purchased or at least contracted. Is, is that what's on the table? I think Phil may have gone away. Anyway, guys, that's that's what I know to be true. Um, we'll be doing more and more deals as we go forward. There's a lot of retailers in California. And uh, believe me, we, we watch the money. We're partners in this with, with these guys and we will be partnered right along with you. Um, so with that, let's take a look at what this actual offering is. So this is a convertible note, as talked about earlier, $100,000 or more in investment gives you the ability to convert into equity. Um, it is a convertible note uh, waterfall product. Um, investors are invited to participate as a revenue share debt investor with preferred waterfall returns, what I was trying to say. Uh, investors will receive 15% annual interest until the investment is repaid with projected repayment of three years. Now, with what we're seeing right now, that could be two years or less. We'll just have to, to you know, play it by ear, but we want to be really conservative again. Um, we'll put out three years as a target. Um, investors receive their return on investment in the waterfall proportion of 70% to 30% with Desert Kings from net revenue until received full return on investment plus your 15% annual. And the next slide, I will go through a hypothetical so you can see these numbers laid out and um, <clears throat> hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. The Zephyr project management team, just so you know, does not participate in any revenue until you, the partners, receive your full return on investment plus the 15% annual interest. So as it's a note and not a distribution from a stock, you have a higher uh, ranking in terms of return than you would if it was just an ordinary uh, stock support. Um, also the following full return on investment plus 15% annual interest revenue share for the following three years will be calculated 50-50 to investors uh, in Zephyr Project Management, 50% to Desert Kings. So once you have your money back and you receive the full 50% interest, the following three years will go down to a 50-50 split between the, the parties and you receiving an additional 15% in each of those three years um, following the, the full repayment of your, your principal. Um, after the investor received the full ROI plus a 15% per year, investors will share a total of three years ongoing, which I just said. So uh, we're good there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this hypothetical. Um, this is a hypothetical investment return, waterfall structure. So if you'll take a look here, you'll see that the investment amount is 10,000. Uh, year one, it shows cash on cash return of 48%. So in this example, if you spread out your 10,000 over three years, you're going to get 33% back each of those three years for a total of your 100% money back plus the 15%, which is where we get the 48% from. And then in this example, hypothetical as well, you're going to see three additional years of return um, at 15%. So this could be two years. So the target uh, actual returns, let me just put the head to go ahead and say the disclaimer, actual returns may vary depending on factors such as harvest yield and other events of nature. Although it's indoor plant, you're not gonna, or indoor facility, plant, not, <laughs> no pun intended, um, as well as market conditions and pricing for production inputs and outputs. However, with the, with the increase in demand and the massive uh, gap, which is really why, why we're excited and why we want you to be excited to partner with us is, is the problem that we're facing in this industry. Lots of, of quality problems and lots of quantity problems. They're not consistent with deliveries. Retail locations are not able to get the ongoing stock that they're looking for or need to meet the demands. <laughs> so we've given a lot of information today. There's some very exciting things happening. We went a little bit more technical than maybe we probably should have, but I really just want to make sure that the, the audience understands the difference between traditional, an indoor growing operation and a pharmaceutical grade operation. Um, there's completely night and day apples and oranges in, in cost, quality, production, um, consistency. And anytime you're trying to build a business, you want to have that consistency and trust so that whoever you're, you're marketing to and or delivering to has the, the trust and faith that they're going to get a consistent quality product, you know, each time that they purchase. Um, <clears throat> so that obviously is a very, very important point and a controlled environment. In California, which obviously is recreational and medicinal, the demand is massive. We are the A solution and feel as the first GMP compliant solution um, gives us a tremendous leg up, not only for today, but going forward, looking at additional liquidation events. Um, liquidation event could be uh, going public. It could be a buyout or a merger. 
um, and or it could be uh, stock splitting or a couple other different variations. So we encourage people to get in. Uh, $100,000 or more typically is a convertible note, but today getting in, um, our support staff is available uh, regular business hours via email as well as call, um, and we can arrange special private meetings if you need that. So with that, I want to uh, give a very special thank you to Phil and, and George for your time today and all your hard work in making this come together. We're excited to, to launch this with you guys, and obviously we're looking to have this thing be fully subscribed over the next few weeks. And with that, everybody. All right. Thank you. Have a great day.